Hey guys, it's Special Aussie here and welcome to episode 13 of my Athletic Wheelbow series for Football Manager 2019. So today's episode is going to be an end of season review. Uh, we're also going to do a live comm against Espanyol, as that is the last game of the league season. Uh, we're going to go through the player stats and stuff as well at the end of the game. And we'll just sort of we'll just sort of wrap everything up. I mean, as you can see, we're getting to the league table now. We did finish in 5th place, um, I don't think we can go any lower, um, it does go between results, which is the reason why we can't actually get 4th place, because I mean realistically if it was goal difference, we probably wouldn't get it anyway because we're 5 goals behind Atletico at the moment, but uh, we did unfortunately lose, a, 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 I think we lost and drew against Atletico earlier this season. So there's pretty much no chance because of the uh, way La Liga works, um, in, you know, with their sorting rules. Um, so I also think that we are safe in fifth position, although it doesn't really matter if we come fifth or sixth. I think both of those positions get the Europa League group stage. Um, and that's what we've gotten for next season. It was our uh, goal set out by the board. So we have achieved our goal, but of course I had more of a personal goal that I wanted to get Champions League football again this season. Uh, but it wasn't to be, yeah. Real Betis, 77 points, absolutely smashed it. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like they've probably taken our Champions League spot. Um, so yeah, let's go into the recent fixtures. Of course, the previous episode, I believe, was against Deportivo Alaves. Nice little 2 0 victory in the last episode. We then followed that up with a disappointing 1-0 loss to Malaga. As you can see, two red cards, one for each team. Um, and they did get a goal in the 21st minute. And San Jose getting sent off. He likes to get sent off quite a bit. Um, he did get sent off right at the end of the game as well. So, I mean, it's not that bad. But we did lose. And we unfortunately lost the next game as well to Villarreal. 2-1 loss here. Sosita opened the scoring in the third minute. And then Itaraspe scored an own goal. Um, in the 14th, and then they got the winning goal in the 17th. So, yeah, not great. Bad own goal score there by one of our players. And, uh, yeah, really disappointing result. Of course, a couple of these losses or draws that we had, if we turned those into wins, we would probably, well, we would definitely be in Champions League football. So that's, it's a little bit disappointing. Uh, we did have the really bad run of games around this time. Um, and then we sort of went unbeaten for a while. We're still currently unbeaten. Um, at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we followed it up with a 2-0 victory over Sevilla. Simon Kaya, own goal in the 7th minute. Again, two red cards for each team. And Anaki Williams in the 71st minute. Picking up the winning, or oh, the, the second goal of the game. In what is also the winning goal of the game, I guess. Um, and we disappointingly managed to lose the next game to Levante, who were in the relegation zone. A 2-1 loss... Um, just really not great, and of course, this is like one of the games that we probably should have won, and uh, that would have, of course, pushed us over the, the threshold into the Champions League spots. Itaraspe on the score sheet, but yeah, we were already 2-0 down by that time, and really just trying to, to push on. We then, again, had another really disappointing result. We drew nil all with Cadiz at home. Um, as you can see, no one really played that well. Uh, Ganea with a 7 was the only real standout. And even then, we just really didn't do anything at all, to be honest. Naki Williams with a 6.3. When that happens, you know you're having a pretty bad day, especially up front with our striker. So, yeah. We then managed to lose the next game to Barcelona at Camp Nou. And, yeah, I mean... I think we played pretty well in this game. Of course, Williams again with a 6.2. He's... Oh, it's just really hard to, to clarify how his season has gone. He's been so inconsistent, like just up and down performances. One week he'll score two or three goals. Sorry, one game he'll score two or three goals. Next game he'll get a 6.2. Exactly what happened in this game. Uh, Ramiro, definitely the best player, our goalkeeper. Uh, Dybala opened the scoring in the ninth minute, and that was the only goal of the game, despite us playing pretty poorly, I would say. 
Uh, we then bounce back with a 4-0 victory over Osasuna. Of course, they're one of our rivals. I think ge- I think they are geographically one of our rivals as well. They're sort of in the Basque region. Um, yeah, Munaim with a brace. Javi Martinez and Interaspe are also on the score sheet. And uh, this is sort of where the, the bad run of form ended. And uh, yeah, we started picking up a few good wins and a few good results here and there as well. We followed up with a 3-0 victory over Rayo Vallecano. Uh, Williams, Martinez, and Itaraspe on the score sheet again. Good stuff. Of course, Betis have come third this season, so we only managed a nil-all draw against them. Um, San Jose missed a penalty as well, which of course would have won us the game. Um, but overall, I mean, Betis, for some reason, they're just really strong this season. Um, I'm pretty sure they... They're usually like a relegation candidate, so I don't I don't know what has ha- actually happened to them this season. Uh, but yeah, not a great result either way when you consider that we should have won that with a penalty. We then drew one all against Real Oviedo. This was a much worse performance than the previous game. As you can see, Anaki Williams in the 18th minute, they got a goal back through Okaka. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, Sunset and Ganea both getting sent off with straight reds in this game. Um, both red cards were very late on, but still, just, I don't know, absolute stupidity, I guess. That's all you can really say about it. We then managed a 2 all draw with Atletico Madrid, Anaki Williams and Cecita on the score sheet for us. And as you can see over here, Zerdan Shakiri in the 95th minute, five minutes into stoppage time, and he gets the equalizer for them. And... This game right here, this is one of the games I was talking about. This game right here, if we had not conceded that goal in the 95th minute, would have gotten us Champions League football. Um, So, absolutely devastating result there. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It kind of sums up this season. You know, we've done well, and then we've had a few bad patches here and there. And uh, overall, just... Just not good enough um, on several fronts. Of course, I mentioned Williams as being a, a bit inconsistent, especially with the money we're paying him. 185k per week is massive, and it's kind of it is starting to bleed the finances a little bit. Um, but yeah, the next game we bounce back with a 4-1 victory over our arch rivals Real Sociedad. Nike Williams with a hat trick here, and San Jose actually scoring a penalty for once. It's good to see. Uh, we followed that up with a 2-1 away victory at Leganes. Again, Williams on the score sheet with Itaraspe also coming up with a goal. Disappointing nil all draw with Deportivo de la Coruna. Nice little victory in the previous game over Valencia with a Hervias goal in the 15th minute. And of course, that is all the fixtures. So let's get into today's game and we'll do a bit of a, a fixture review. Um... Not a fixture review, sorry, a player review. We'll go through everybody's goals and ratings and just won't go into too much detail, but we'll just show you guys exactly who has sort of performed well this season. Um, unfortunately, we do have a couple of players that are lacking fitness or conditioning at the moment um, because that Valencia game was, I think, two days ago. Um, but I think we will just stick with this team. Of course, it is the last game of the season. It doesn't really matter too much and... Yeah, I think we'll just go with that. As you can see, not too many players with over 7 average ratings throughout the season. Uh, Ganea definitely been the standout. And of course, Munayin has also... He's done really well, but he was injured for, I think, at least 3-4 to four months, maybe even more, throughout the season. So that was really disappointing. Um, but yeah, Itaraspe, 7.05 for one of our boarding midfielders, is also pretty good as well. Um, of course, Espanyol, they I think uh, they might actually be in the relegation zone. Um, I'm not too sure about that, but I'm going to tell the boys to expect them to win, and we'll just go out there and hopefully get a nice little victory to continue our unbeaten run at the moment. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, potentially send at, uh, Espanyol down a division and relegate them. I'm not, I probably should have looked at that in a bit more detail, um, but I'm not... I mean, it doesn't really matter too much, I guess. Of course, this is... I mean, it's, it's a bit of a nothing game because of the way that the league's played out. Um, of course, it was 
it could, well, it could, this episode could have been much more exciting. And I, I sort of thought it would be as Williams. He's had so many one-on-ones this season that he has not scored. And it has pissed me off beyond belief. Like all those games where he has the 6.2 or the 6.3 average rating, he's he's one-on-one with goalkeepers, and he just cannot finish. I don't know if I need to um, give him a player-preferred move or, or what I need to do to, to make him score those goals as Benat picks up an injury going into halftime. And we'll bring Martinez on. Martinez, I mean, he's, he's actually developed really well, but he hasn't played too well this season, um, which is unfortunate. Did that sub go through? I'm not too sure if that sub went through or not. Um, I'm just going to tell the boys I'm not happy with their performance, to be honest. We uh, we should be beating a team like Espanyol with ease, to be honest. As they get a chance. And they score a goal 14 seconds into the half. I absolutely cannot believe that. Anyway, not the start that we would have wanted to the second half. but And the sub didn't go through. That's really annoying. I don't know why that has happened, but that's really stupid. Clearly, I made the sub before half time. Okay, well, I'm really. I'm, this is actually frustrating me a lot. The fact that we're losing to Espanyol, who we really should be beating. Ganea with a corner. And we're back on level terms. Oihan Sunset. He's, uh, he's gotten a little bit of game time this season, and um, he's, he's done all right. Hasn't, you know, set the world alight, but gets us a, a goal back there. Another corner, and it's somehow gone in the back of the net. Javi Martinez with his seventh goal of the season. Pretty impressive, not going to lie. Didn't really think it was that many. Um, we're actually going to make another sub. We can't really make a sub here, actually. Um... All right, what are we going to do? Yeah, I don't think we can really... No, we can't really bring anyone on. That's unfortunate. I wanted to take Guinea off. He's on a yellow, and he's also really, really fatigued. Um, yeah, but somehow we're back in the lead. I, I don't I don't really know how that happened, but I'm, I'm definitely happy that it has, because considering a goal 14 seconds into the second half... Oh, and their player's getting sent off now as well. This goes from bad to worse for Espanyol, I guess. I thought it was going to be one of those days for us, but... Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that... Yeah, that we've won this game. I mean, it's... it's like I said, it means nothing really in the grand scheme of things, but... For you guys, I know it's, it's always good to see a win on a video. As opposed to a disappointing loss. And that's what it definitely could have been. As you can see, we... I mean, we dominated a little bit. Probably should have been a bit more. I mean, they had a lot of chances, which is unfortunate. Um, maybe they were going attacking. I don't know. Um, apparently, they've avoided relegation. I don't really understand how that happened. Um, but yeah. Sunset man of the match. It's good to see as well. Well, uh, we'll, let, we'll let... Yeah, we'll praise him. Why not? You got the goal. The first goal. Who's this guy? He's, he's not bad. Transfer listed. How much is he going for? 11 million. No, thank you. Alrighty. So let's go into the, the player stats. We'll go into the squad here. Um, and then we'll change this to selection info. Alright, so the best performers, as I mentioned before, Ganea, Munayin, Lekue as well. Um, he's also been out injured for, for quite some time this season. Um, it's interesting to say that both of the right backs, Kappa and Lekue, both were injured for like long periods of time, like three to four months as well. But we got lucky because they got injured at separate times. So we always had one right back that was, well, first team right back that was fit. Um, just looking through. Of course, Munayin got seven goals, five assists. Pretty good. Lekue with nine assists. That's very impressive. And Itaraspe, you know, more of a defensive-minded midfielder. Coming up with eight goals this season. Really didn't expect that. Um, of course, Williams, nine point, uh, sorry, 6.96. Not a bad average rating by any stretch of the imagination, but um, playing 35 games, only scoring 16 for a player of his quality and you know how much we've 
well, how much we paid for him. We paid, what, 16, nearly 17 million for him. And then he's also making 185k a week, which is quite a lot of money over a season. Um, I don't know. I expected a little bit more from him. At least 20. 20 would have been a nice, a nice number there. Uh, as I mentioned before, Martinez, um, with the second goal in today's game, puts him up to seven goals for the season. Um, only two assists. It's pretty low. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird one. I would expect him to have a couple more. Um, which is odd. Uh, but just looking down, of course the lone players, Brace is actually injured at the moment, but as you can see, he is going to be something special. Um, he's probably going to, well, he's definitely going to stay at the club next season, and he's definitely going to be in the first team. And of course he can play right back as well, either, uh, either footed as well, which, you know, means he can definitely... Well, he'll probably find himself on the bench if he's not starting every single game. Um, just to to be cover, but also to potentially bring him on, give him some time to uh, to develop a little bit further. As you can see, his media description is a wonder kid at the moment. So, yeah, very, very happy with him and his progress out on loan this season. And I think he's definitely ready to uh, to come into the first team and fight for that first that starting spot in the first 11. So... Yeah, really happy with that. It's pretty much going to wrap this episode up, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. And I hope you will join me back for the next episode, which will, of course, be preseason as well as the first game of the season. Yeah, really enjoying the series. Um, I've also recorded this on a new mic. Um, I've just got a Yeti, um, which I'm really happy about. I'm not really too sure about the, the sound settings. I haven't really adjusted anything too much. Um, so yeah, hopefully the mic sounds pretty good. And hopefully you cannot hear a school bell in the background. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you're a new viewer, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.